The engines awoke early one morning to find the workmen crowding around Henry. It had been a rough night for the poor engine, and now things were worse. Henry's steam pressures were dropping quickly, and the workmen were scrambling to find the source of the problem. The fat controller had ordered for the other engines to move out of the sheds to give work crew space to work. They all looked on from a distance, feeling very sorry for Henry the green engine. Henry was known to be sickly, but the engines had never seen him quite this ill. What would happen to Henry, sir? asked Thomas shakily. The fat controller looked grim. I don't know, Thomas, said the fat controller. I really don't know. We'll wait and see what the workmen say. In the meantime, the engines started their work for the day, but they were all very distracted thinking about what awful news the workmen might bring. Gordon, however, didn't seem bothered at all. Henry needs to learn to work through his aches and pains, he fussed at the station that afternoon. Even if I have a boiler egg, I still pull my train. It's about integrity. This made the other engines very cross. I'm ashamed of you, Gordon, scowled Edward. Integrity has nothing to do with it. Health is health, and that's worth more than work. Do you not get tired of Henry's incessant moaning and groaning? Gordon asked. No, but it does break my heart, and I'm worried that Henry's condition doesn't do the same to you, Gordon. Look, Edward, Gordon said sternly, I feel bad for the poor engine too, but there's something to be said for working despite the pain and not being a layabout. The engines were most annoyed. Soon the station was full of whistles and bellows as the engines argued with Gordon. The fat controller came out of his office and silenced the engines. What is all the noise about? he yelled. The engines all tried to talk at once, but Gordon's loud, pompous voice drowned the others out. Phew! fumed Gordon. No one cares for me when I'm ill, sir. Why should it be any different for Henry? That's because Henry is shicker than you ever have been, Gordon, said the fat controller sharply. What do you mean, sir? Edward asked. I just got off the telephone with the leader of the work crews. Henry has several cracked boiler tubes. It is no wonder he was leaking steam and losing his fires. He'll need a new boiler, but it'll be a long time before we can fashion a new one. The engines were shocked. A boiler replacement was a very serious repair indeed. This meant that Henry would be out of service for a long time. In the meantime, the fat controller continued, Henry's work will be distributed amongst the rest of you. I expect you all to pitch in. But, sir, Gordon cried, I've got to pull the express. I can't take on any more work. Gordon, shut up, growled Edward. Gordon, it seems you have a very, er, uh, conservative view of Henry's condition. While I do not like having to put more on your plate, it is your obligation to help when an engine is in need. You would not expect others to leave your work by the wayside if you were ill, would you? Gordon didn't reply. He simply snorted out of the station. How indignant, said Edward. The fat controller quite agreed. The fat controller, after much time and effort, gave the engines their new timetables. The most difficult of Henry's train to sort out was the Flying Kipper, which left early most mornings of the week. It was finally determined that Edward should take the train. But when Edward arrived the first morning, the Kipper wasn't there. Where on earth are my trucks? Edward cried. This happened every morning, and Edward's train was not the only one to disappear. James and Thomas's extra trains were often missing too. The whole situation was very perplexing. As time went on, it became known that another engine had been taking Henry's trains, but no one knew who the engine was. It's so confusing, said Thomas to the others one night at the sheds. It bewildered all of us, including the fat controller, agreed Edward. I just don't get it. I suppose it's good to have a benefactor though. James said. It's lighting the load for all of us. Far across the island at the works, Henry sat waiting for the day his boiler was finished and ready to be placed. 
He felt lonely, but smiled because he knew a good friend was coming to visit that evening. This engine had been helping the others while Henry was away. Henry beamed as the benefactor backed down beside him. Thank you for helping out the others, Gordon, Henry said warmly. Of course. Gordon, why don't you just tell them what you're doing? I'm sure they would gladly help out, said Henry thoughtfully. Perhaps, my dear Henry, started Gordon. But they're a lot smaller than you and I, and get tired a lot easier, especially Edward. He is getting old now, and I don't want him to get sick too. The flying kipper is too much for him to handle. I agree, Henry said. But why keep them in the dark? Gordon chuckled. <laughs> I've got an arrogant, pompous image to keep up, you know that. If they knew I was working behind the scenes between my trains, they wouldn't believe it. They'd kneel over. Does the fat controller know? asked Henry. Of course he does. I never get away with it otherwise. The two engines laughed deeply, and then Gordon set out to get ready for his next train.